So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and quickly read through the question to see if you understand what it's asking. So now that you've done that, I hope you realise this is a question which is all about heat and power. So what I've got uh, is a container, and the container has some water in it. How much water? I've got 100 grams of water. And it also has an electrical immersion heater, so that's just basically a, a filament. Uh, and importantly, that filament provides 200 watts or, if you remember that, is 200 joules per second. 200 joules of energy uh, per second is being delivered to the water, uh, and that's going to heat the water uh, and raise the water's temperature. We don't have to worry about any heat which is lost to the surrounding environment. And what we're asked to find out is how long it takes, okay, calculate the time required in order to raise the temperature from 23 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius. So since this is a question regarding to uh, heat, first of all we should ask ourselves how much energy is required in order to uh, change the temperature of that water. Um, how much energy is required to, to, to heat up uh, depends upon uh, how much material we have, what's the mass of the water, depends upon the kind of material we have, the specific heat uh, in this case of water, and it depends upon how much we're going to change the temperature by. So MC delta T. And the, this delta T is T final minus T initial. Uh, so a couple of quantities we have to uh, be able to uh, have. Uh, one is remembering what the specific heat of water is. So we can look that up in a textbook. So 4184 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Uh, what's important here is that the, those units do tell us a little bit about well, what uh, the units of these quantities have to be. If my specific heat is going to be in uh, joules per kilogram, uh, per Kelvin, then I'd want my mass to be in kilograms, that way the, uh, the kilogram will cancel with the per kilogram, and I'd want my change in temperature to also have the units of Kelvin, that way my Kelvin would cancel with my per Kelvin, leaving me with my heat, which is an energy, just in joules. So that means I need to write down here uh, my mass of water, which is, if it's 100 grams, needs to be converted to kilograms, so that's equal to 0.1 kilograms, multiplied by 4184 uh, for my specific heat, multiplied by my change in temperature. Now, that change in temperature, T final minus T initial, um, my temperatures are given in Celsius, so do I need to convert them first to Kelvin? Well, not really, because it turns out that a change in temperature of 1 degree Celsius is the same as a change in temperature of one Kelvin. Okay, the, the, the same markings on a thermometer. Uh, and if you want another way of proving that to yourself is well, T final minus T initial is 100 uh, degrees Celsius minus uh, 23 degrees Celsius. If I was to convert this uh, to Kelvin, then I'll be adding 273 to this number, and at the same time I'd also add 273 this number uh, and then the terminal brackets would be um, 100 plus 273 minus 23 minus 273 and so the 273s would just cancel so it makes little difference uh, it makes no difference whatsoever if you were to use Celsius in here okay so importantly that difference there is going to be uh, 77 as a number so if we multiply those three things together, uh, we end up with uh, 32,216.8 joules. Okay, that's the total amount of energy which is required in order to change the temperature from 23 to 100. To work out how long that would take, well, we know we're giving it 200 joules every second, so we just need to divide that number, 32,216.8 joules, by the uh, power that we're adding in, okay, uh, by 200. Remember the units for this are 200 joules per second. The joules cancel, and then we've got 1 over per second. So 1 over per second has the units of seconds. So unitly is correct as well. So uh, you can put that into your calculator and you get 116 seconds is how long it takes to uh, heat that water up. Does that make sense? Well, we can do a couple of things. We can change 
the amount of material we had, what if we changed the mass? If we made the mass of water larger, then that means that this total amount of energy here would be larger as well. That means that the time it takes would be larger. So that seemed to make sense. The more water I have, the longer it takes. If I was to bump up the power of my immersion heater, a larger heater, uh, that means I'd be supplying a larger amount of power per unit time. That means that the denominator here would be larger and it would take a draw, my time would be shorter. So that makes sense as well.